Today we've got a nice infinite series. So in fact, we're gonna find the exact value of the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two to the n times one over one plus two to the power two to the minus n. So let's get started by looking at this one over one plus two to that power and see if we can simplify that at all. So let's take this and take the one over one and I'm gonna change that plus to a minus. And I'm gonna do that because I know that if I have a minus there, perhaps I could factor it using a difference of squares, but with the plus, I can't really do that. So let's write two to the two to the one minus n. And I'm writing it as one minus n because now observe that that's one over one minus two to the two to the minus n all squared. Well, if I square that, I'm gonna multiply the exponents, but that's gonna give me this exact thing right here. But now let's observe that that's just one over one minus x squared where x is equal to this thing, which is two to the two to the minus n. And I'm writing it as one over one minus x squared because that motivates us to do a partial fraction decomposition. So in fact, we can take one over one minus x squared, and well, it's pretty straightforward to show that this is one half and then one over one minus x plus one over one plus x. But then inserting that up here, what do we have? Well, this whole thing is gonna be a half and then one over one minus x, so that's gonna be one over one minus two to the two to the minus n plus one over one plus two to the two to the minus n. So we've got something like that. But let's observe that we can solve this for our one over one plus two to the two to the minus n in terms of these other things. Let's see if we can fit that down here in this green box. So we've got one over one plus two to the two to the minus n is now equal to well, let's see, we can multiply by two and we'll have two over one minus two to the two to the one minus n and then minus one over one minus two to the two to the minus n. So we've got something like that. And again, that's by solving this decomposition that we've just done for this ter term that I've underlined in orange. So now what we'll do is we'll replace that object up here, which is inside of our sum with, well, this decomposition and simultaneously recall that a series converges if and only if its sequence of partial sums converges. And so let's look at the sequence of partial sums. So this is gonna be the limit as capital N goes to infinity. And now we have the sum as little n goes from one to capital N of one over two to the n times, well, this decomposition that we have. So we'll have two over one minus two to the two to the one minus n. So we've got something like that. And then let's see, uh, minus one over one minus two to the two to the minus n. Okay, so something like that. And the interesting thing here is notice that these exponents are off by one. So that motivates a possible telescoping action for this series. But in order to really see that, I'd like to split this into two sums. And we're allowed to do that because inside of the limit, we simply have finite sums. So let's see, this first one is gonna turn into the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two to the n minus one, canceling those twos, and then n times one over one minus two to the power two to the power minus n minus one, where I factored that minus sign out to make those uh, exponents look the same, if you will. Okay, and then from that, we will subtract the sum as n goes from one up to capital N, this should have been capital N over here, of one over two to the N, 
and then one over, I'm just bringing the rest of this stuff down. So there's not really anything going on there. Okay, great. And now what I'll do is I'll perform an index change in the first sum. So the index change that we'll want will be to replace all of the ends here with n plus one. But that's gonna change the starting term and the ending term as well, because when n plus one is one, n is equal to zero. So now this sum will start at zero and it'll end at n minus one. It just shifts the indices, if you will. Okay, so let's see, we've got now the limit as capital N goes to infinity. And then we'll have our sum as little n goes from zero up to capital N minus one of one over two to the n times one over one minus two to the two to the minus n. Again, I replaced all my n's with n plus ones. That turns those n minus ones to just n's. And now I'll just bring the rest of this down and see what we can do. So if you notice, now our two sums look pretty similar. So let's observe that this goes from zero to n, the other one goes from n equals one up to n. But notice that they have almost all of the same terms. This first one has a zeroth term, whereas the second one doesn't. The second one has an n term, whereas the first one doesn't. So what that means is that everything in the middle will cancel. All we'd be left with is the zeroth term for the first sum and the capital nth term for the last sum. So plugging in n equals zero here, it's pretty clear that we get the number negative one. We have one over two to the zero, which is one, and then one over one minus two to the two to the zero. But let's see, that's gonna be two to the one, which is, we got one minus two there, okay. And then minus, so that's gonna be just that thing with a capital N in there. So we've got one over two to the capital N, and then one over one minus two to the two to the minus N. So something like that. Okay, so now let's bring that up and see what we can do with this limit. Okay, so if you're still here and you're enjoying the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed yet, uh, maybe think about subscribing, it would really help us out. Okay, so now back to the problem. We wrote our infinite sum as the following limit. And now I'd like to evaluate this limit and perhaps I'll do that by doing a change of variables. So what change of variables? Well, notice we've got a two to the n and we've got a two to the minus n in this situation. And in fact, I think it's a little more natural to take this one over two to the n here and write it as a two to the minus n because now this whole second term is just in terms of two to the minus n fairly naturally. And that uh, motivates the substitution x equals two to the minus n. And now let's observe as n goes to plus infinity, which is what's happening over here, we have x approaching zero from above. Now let's see what we have. So I'm gonna bring this minus one out and then we'll have minus the limit as x goes to zero from above of, well, it's gonna be x over one minus two to the x. So when all is said and done. Now I'm actually gonna do one more thing here as well. I'm gonna change this minus to a plus and then change the order of subtraction that's happening down there in the denominator. Okay. So now if we look at this carefully, we'll see that we have an indeterminate form of type zero over zero. As x goes to zero, well, x goes to zero, and then we'll have two to the zero minus one, which is zero. And so I want to evaluate this using L'Hopital's rule. So let's see, using L'Hopital's rule, we can exchange the numerator for its derivative and the denominator for its derivative as well. The derivative of x is pretty clearly equal to one. And then the derivative of the denominator, well, we've got to remember the derivative of an arbitrary exponential function. And in this case, we'll get the natural log of two times two to the x. If you don't know exactly how we might do something like that, let's recall that we can take the derivative of two to the x by writing two to the x as e to the natural log of two times x. 
but now we can simply use the chain rule to give us the natural log of 2 times e to the natural log of 2 times x. But again, that e to the natural log of 2 times x is simply 2 to the x. So that's how we did that. But now it's no longer an indeterminate form. In fact, we can simply plug in x equals 0 here and we'll have 1 over the natural log of 2. And then that's our final answer. So our infinite sum is equal to negative 1 plus 1 over log 2.